Welcome to Top 30. Here are today's Top 30 stories in 30 minutes. The Flint water crisis was an eye-opening state of emergency, but did you know that there are 3,810 other places in the U.S. with double the amount of lead poisoning that Flint had? According to an investigation by Reuters, those 3,810 neighborhood areas reported childhood lead poisoning rates at least double those found in Flint during the 2014-2015 contamination. In fact, 1,300 areas reported elevated blood tests at least four times higher than those found in Flint. Some of the communities found to have particularly high levels were areas of Savannah, Georgia, Brooklyn, New York, and Rutland, Vermont. These are especially scary findings when you realize that children under the age of six are most likely to be affected by lead exposure. In 2016, the United States was the top-ranked country in global image. Well, the new 2017 rankings are out, and let's just say we've dropped. The Nation Brand Index, or NBI, measured global public opinion on the power and quality of each country's, quote, brand image. The NBI rated countries based on six categories. It's people, governance, exports, tourism, investment and immigration, and culture and heritage. Japan came in at number five this year, followed by Canada at four, Britain at three, France moved up three spots from 2016 to land at number two, and the new number one ranked country by global image is Germany. Well, I take that with a grain of salt since the NBI survey was conducted by a German-based market research firm, GFK. As for the USA, we plummeted to number six in global image due to a lower score in the governance category. I guess we'll never know what caused that drop, Come on, number six? I mean, how many Kardashians does a country need to be number one, baby? Veganism is touted as a trend that can fix anything, but can it curb global warming? New research from scientists at Virginia Tech and the USDA says a vegan America could lower greenhouse emissions but wouldn't meet the national nutritional requirements. The study published in Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences says about a quarter of greenhouse emissions produced in the U.S. comes from animal agriculture. It found that going vegan would increase primarily grain food supplies by 23% while dropping emissions related to agriculture by 28%. However, the overall decrease of emissions across the board would go down by only 2.6%. According to Gizmodo, scientists from the study say a vegan America would also create a food supply incapable of supporting the U.S. population's nutritional requirements. There seems to be no quick fix when it comes to a greener, healthier America. It's time for today's health roundup. Winter is here and the cold weather may actually be good for your health. Some people may be able to get a better night's sleep. Our body temperature drops when we sleep, but some people who have a hard time falling asleep can't regulate body temperature. The cold can help with that. It can also stimulate hunger. A study shows some people who have a hard time developing an appetite can exercise in the cool air before a meal to increase their hunger. And if you're looking to lose weight, studies can show shivering releases a hormone that induces fat burning. Our second story is a report that warns about a link between air pollution and low birth weight in babies. The study analyzed about 540,000 births in London, and the results were published in a health journal called BMJ. The researchers said there's no way for pregnant women to totally avoid pollution and called on governments around the world to increase air quality. Finally, good news for cheese lovers. A study says eating about 1.4 ounces of cheese each day can help reduce the risk of heart disease and stroke. The results were published in the European Journal of Nutrition. Researchers analyzed 15 observational studies to come up with their conclusion, but they cautioned the study is observational and there will need to be further medical studies to find out if the link actually exists. That's today's Health Roundup. Could you tell if someone is a Republican or Democrat just by looking at their car? Well, researchers at Stanford University think so. They used artificial intelligence to pour over 50 million images in 200 cities from Google Street View. The process would have taken a human 15 years, but it only took the AI two weeks. Researchers found that if an area has a greater number of pickup trucks, that they have an 82% chance of voting Republican. Also, if an area has a majority of sedans, there's an 88% chance that they'll vote Democrat. The study's first author, Timnit Jabru, called the results surprisingly accurate. By simply looking at the automobiles on the streets, they were able to correctly verify that Casper, Wyoming, 
would vote Republican in an election. She believes this technology may one day help us get a census on an area at a much lower cost than current methods. So that's good news. You no longer need those tacky bumper stickers telling people who you voted for. Although if you have a Prius, you can probably guess. Six-year-old Liana Stevens is battling brain cancer, but a new four-legged friend is helping her ease the fight. A police officer from her Patterson, New Jersey town recently delivered an adorable Havanese puppy to Liana and her healthy twin brother. The puppy, who doesn't yet have a name, is neutered and has all his shots. He even came with dog food. The girl's mother, Carolyn Reyes, said in an interview that she thinks it's, quote, an amazing idea. And not surprisingly, Officer John DeCando says he felt like a million bucks when he gave Liana and her brother the puppy. In some situations, there's nothing you can say to make things better. But what Officer DeCando did inspired this little girl to keep fighting on. You officially have no excuse the next time you can't decide where to eat because America has too many restaurants. The Bureau of Labor Statistics estimates there are more than 620,000 restaurants in the US. That number is growing about twice as fast as the population. Sales are going up, but growth, the increase in sales over time, has slowed to its lowest rate since 2010. That's because while Americans are spending more of their income on dining out, they're spreading that money across a larger number of businesses, so everyone gets less money. The industry also faces rising costs for labor, real estate, and higher franchise fees. Big chains like Burger King or Subway charge owners a fee to open new locations. According to the New York Times, the restaurant boom started on Wall Street. After the dot-com collapse in the early 2000s, big banks started steering money toward restaurants hoping for a better investment. The question now is whether the restaurant boom will lead to a bust. A group called Governing the States and Localities used census numbers to determine where Generation X is moving from and to. Economists say that states desirable to people between the ages of 35 and 50 can signal good places to raise families and grow financially. The report analyzed 2010 through 2016 and found Illinois had the most Gen Xers leaving, dropping 4.2%. That could be because of slow job growth. New Mexico is also struggling with unemployment at 4.1% decrease, and the high cost of living may have been a major factor in Washington, D.C.'s 3.5% drop. On the other side of the spectrum, Texas saw a 4.1% increase. Florida was up 7.6%, which is in line with the state's overall growth. And the top spot Gen Xers are migrating to, North Dakota at 7.7%. North Dakota features various benefits, including major job growth and a low crime rate. It's also home to the world's largest Buffalo monument, but I'm not sure if that had any impact on drawing people to the state. Where you exercise may be just as important as whether you exercise. A new study in the UK found that the health benefits of a long walk can be completely wiped out by air pollution. Researchers studied a group of people 60 years old or older. Some were healthy and some had heart disease. Participants walked for two hours on London's congested Oxford Street. A few weeks later, they walked in a park. Not surprisingly, the people walking in the park did better. They saw increased lung capacity, they had increased blood flow, and their arteries became less stiff by up to 24%. What was surprising was how much worse those walking in the city did. Their arteries had actually gotten stiffer. Some reported shortness of breath, the team thinks that it's from the streets, taxi, and bus traffic. The scientists say it's a problem because for many elderly people or those with chronic disease, walking may be their only source of exercise. The study's lead author said, quote, our findings underscore that we can't really tolerate the levels of air pollution that we currently find on our busy streets. The report calls on cities to encourage more green spaces and fewer polluting vehicles. We're always looking for quick fixes when it comes to our health. That's part of the appeal of dietary supplements. All you have to do is take a pill and poof, you're healthier. But most dietary supplements aren't actually necessary for you to be healthy. 
However, there is research to suggest some supplements actually can be beneficial for your health. Here are some supplements that might actually be worth it. One, vitamin D. This helps keep your bones strong and most people don't get enough of it from their diet. Two, creatine. This can help if you're doing short, high intensity workouts. Three, zinc. This can help shorten colds by interfering with viral replication. And four, folic acid. If you're pregnant, folic acid may help decrease birth defects. One thing's for sure, do your research before incorporating any supplement into your diet. New research out of the Kellogg School of Management at Northwestern University says that breathing can change your brain. The study was conducted using recordings of brain waves from human beings who are undergoing brain surgery. Research showed that different types of breathing, like inhaling and exhaling at different paces or paying careful attention to the breaths taken, lit up different parts of the brain. In the same way that humans control a variety of emotional responses and animals do not, humans can also exercise conscious control over their own breathing. That's something that animals cannot do. Data collected by scientists indicated that breathing techniques implemented during times of stress to alter a person's emotional state of being actually can change the way the brain works. So the next time you're frustrated and about to give up, Take a few deep breaths and wait for your breakthrough. In today's hometown stories from Fox 2 San Francisco, a six week golf program in Oakland does much more than just help you improve your swing. The organization HOPE, which stands for Helping Our Patriots Everywhere, uses golf as a form of therapy for veterans. It's sponsored by the PGA and pro golfers teach the lessons. Tim Young, who spent 26 years in the Air Force, said it's a good way to meet other vets and find a sense of community. In our second story from Fox 10 Phoenix, two organizations devoted to animals well-being are working together to find Stray's Forever Homes. Humane Animal Rescue and Trapping Team, or HART, brings animals left on the streets to Foothills Animal Rescue, where they're given medical treatment and later adopted. HART uses humane trapping techniques to rescue shy dogs who can't be enticed with food. Using technology like sensors and cameras allows them to reach dogs in 30 minutes or less. They have rescued hundreds of animals who otherwise wouldn't survive on their own. In our final story from Fox 7 Austin, We Rock the Spectrum Gym provides a fun and safe place for children with autism to play. The gym features equipment specifically designed to work with many of the sensory processing issues that children with autism face. We Rock the Spectrum was created to build upon the inclusion practices done in school outside of the classroom. But the fun isn't just for kids with autism, it's an inclusive space for all children to enjoy. One library doesn't just have free books, it offers a free college degree. The Brooklyn Public Library in Prospect Heights is launching a micro college. The school will be run by Bard College in upstate New York. Students can earn an associate arts degree from the classes, which costs nothing. The program is aimed at talented people who haven't gotten college degrees because of personal hardships or cost. That's why it accommodates parents by offering classes for their kids at the same time. You don't need standardized test results or a transcript to apply. It's run by Bard's Max Kenner, who says, the way we go about college access in the U.S. is a catastrophic failure. The school says they're hoping to help not just students, but an entire community. Some decisions are bigger than others, and some of them make history for all the wrong reasons. Here's a look at some of those mistakes. The Beatles auditioned for Decca Records in London in 1962. The company rejected the band from Liverpool and went with a local band because it would be easier to work with them and stay in touch. Another cringeworthy decision? The CEO of Blockbuster was reportedly offered a deal to buy Netflix for $50 million in 2000. He turned it down. Today, Netflix has a market value at more than $60 billion, and Blockbuster is almost extinct. And finally, Ronald Wayne was a co-founder of Apple, but he sold his shares of stock in the company for $800 shortly after the company was created. Those shares would be worth tens of billions of dollars today. You know what they say, if you don't learn from history, you're doomed to repeat it. 
Rihanna revealed she struggles with her weight, just like countless other women. In an interview with The Cut, Rihanna admitted she has the pleasure of a fluctuating body type. Her advice when picking out an outfit? I really pay attention every day when I go into the closet about what's working for my body that morning. I feel like that's how everyone should go after fashion because it's an individual thing. A growing list of singers support the body positive movement such as Adele, Nicki Minaj, and Christina Aguilera. Beyonce agrees, telling Very Magazine, we are too obsessed with what a perfect nose is or perfect hair, but there's nothing more beautiful than loving yourself and being confident. Rihanna proves body acceptance is the easiest way to shine bright like a diamond. We're always looking for new ways to make the most of our workout, and a recent fitness trend is fasted cardio. It's when you exercise on an empty stomach, whether it's first thing when you wake up or right before dinner. Proponents say if your primary goal is losing weight, fasted cardio could lead to increased fat loss. But fitness experts warn this comes with the risk of bonking. Yes, that's the actual term, bonking. It's when you feel tired during exercise due to low blood sugar. Experts recommend eating a light amount of food before you exercise to fuel your workout, like a hard-boiled egg, half a banana, or maybe a spoonful of peanut butter. They also recommend not eating for 60 to 90 minutes after working out to capitalize on the increased metabolic rate you get from exercising. So it turns out running on empty, literally, isn't a good idea on life or in exercise. According to Nationwide Insurance, one in four people name their cars. But have you ever named your toothbrush? Probably not. So why do people name some inanimate objects, but not all of them? Well, Nicholas Epley, professor of behavioral science at the University of Chicago Booth School of Business, has made this his life's work, very fulfilling work. One theory he has is that when a car is unreliable and is known to break down, we see that as a very human trait. Machines are supposed to be reliable, and when they aren't, they feel more like us. In a study he had published in Psychological Science, Epley also noted that people who don't have many friends or are lonely may try to compensate by giving names to their objects. A famous example of this, of course, is Tom Hanks and his volleyball Wilson in Castaway. We usually only tend to give names to objects that are very important to us, which is why if you ever come over to my house, I'll introduce you to my best friend, Ricky the Rice Cooker. Another day, another dating trend. According to New York Magazine, the latest is Tinstagramming. Tinstagramming is when someone sees you on Tinder, finds your Instagram handle in the bio section, and then follows you on Instagram. So even if you don't match on Tinder, the person can follow and message you on Instagram. A Tinstagrammer who preferred to stay anonymous told New York Magazine he's won dates using this method, with it working about two to three times out of 30. But this seems like an unsavory way to connect with a person who didn't want to match in the first place, leaving some feeling stalked. As In Touch Magazine pointed out, this trend can turn into a form of cyberbullying, since the person can continue to reach out despite the recipient saying they aren't interested. So stay safe, share only the information you're comfortable with, and report users for inappropriate behavior. Money is no longer the priority when it comes to finding the right job, according to a new survey done by MetLife, yes, the insurance company. Nine out of 10 people say that they take a pay cut to work for a company that has values they agree with rather than somewhere else that pays more. How much more? The average person was willing to take a 21% pay cut, but millennials take the cake, willing to give up 34% of their income for the right employer. That's more than double the amount that baby boomers are willing to give up. John Richter of MetLife said, quote, as work and life blend together, work becomes part of a person's personal brand. People want the workplace to support them and how they view life. I guess the bottom line is that your quality of life is priceless as long as you can still pay your bills. About one in every 20 Americans is now a millionaire. A recent report by financial company Credit Suisse says 1.1 million new millionaires were created in the U.S. in 2017. The stock market boom is the biggest reason for this rise in wealth. It brings the total number of millionaires in this country to more than 15.3 million. Despite having the most millionaires in the world, the median average income for the U.S. is less than $56,000. That ranks just 21st globally. Credit Suisse says the big disparity between the rich and the poor in the U.S. is the reason it's so low on the list. 
Power plants are no longer the biggest emitter of greenhouse gas pollution in America. For the first time in 40 years, now a combination of cars, trucks, planes, trains, and boats emit more. And this is because America has been cleaning up power grids and using more sustainable sources of energy. Coal power has diminished in use by more than a third and coupled with a 60% rise in the use of natural gas. Meanwhile, greenhouse gases from power plants have dipped dramatically. Not only that, transportation-related pollution has declined since the year 2000 because of the rise in popularity of electric and hybrid automobiles. The general reduction of greenhouse gases directly contributes to reducing the onset of asthma, cancer, and heart disease. However, thanks to the popularity of the electric automobile, there will be a chance that transportation will once again take second place to power plants when it comes to emitting pollution. Thanks for watching. You can catch up on past episodes of Top 30 now on Hulu. You can also download the Top 30 mobile app and visit our website. We want to hear from you, so connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Like, follow, and subscribe to at Top 30 TV for interviews and exclusive web content. We'll see you next time on Top 30.